many times um, such existential crises, identity crises happen because of a physical, mental, emotional pain that you're going through. And anyone who is in pain, anyone who is being tested in trial and tribulations, they always have to trust in the mercy of Allah SWT. They have to trust in the love of Allah SWT that, that He has for you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to Season 2 of Tune Islam, a podcast for Singapore Muslim millennials on Islamic faith, love and happiness. Here's where we share spiritual guidance and practical insights to inspire positivity and uplift our well-being. My name is Azza Fariha and I will be your host for today. Here with us today, we have Ustaz Khairul Anwar, a member of the Asatiza Youth Network. Ustaz loves to cook and connect with people of all backgrounds. He is also very passionate about interfaith work and believes that our diversity is our strength. Ustaz now serves as the Mosque Executive Chairman of Masjid Al Falah. Is that correct, Ustaz? Correct. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum salam. Welcome to our podcast. We're happy to have you today, Ustaz. Thank you for having me. Today, Ustaz, we are going to be talking about something quite um, interesting. And I have my first question ready for you. Are you All right. ready? All right. So we're going <laughs> straight into the questions. Straight huh? into the question. All right. <laughs> so Ustaz, what actually is an identity or existential crisis and who is most likely to experience it? Mm -hmm. I think that an existential crisis is when you have uh, deep thoughts about uh, who you are, you know, why you are here. For some people, what what you will leave behind. Mm. I think that it can happen anytime, and and ultimately, you know, sometimes when this happens, it can also affect, uh, you know, your happiness and probably even you know cause cause you anxiety, affect your mental health lah. Generally, I think people who are going through existential crisis, it's always about uh, two main questions, or rather three main questions: who I am, you know, what's 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 the point of my life, and and what's the purpose. Of, of the things that I'm doing, right? Even though I think generally, you know, people who are a bit older would go through this, but I think this crisis can happen to anyone at any age. I've seen many youths who, you know, who are in their much younger age who are dealing with such issues. What dealing age group are you talking about with this? I used to work in, in a masjid and I used to work closely with uh, the youth. The youth who come to the masjid, you know, probably 15 to 17 years old. Oh. And they used to come with really heavy questions, deep questions about their purpose in life. Many, of course, Alhamdulillah, they come to the masjid because they believe that the answer lies in having faith in God and uh, becoming closer to, to God and practicing their faith. But I'm sure there are many others who are also facing, you know, such crisis. questions and crises mm -hmm. in their life. And they are probably dealing, it, dealing with them in other ways, mm -hmm. right? And these youth that I've met, um, you know, some of them, they come from, you know, some very abusive family. Therefore, they start questioning, you know, why they were uh, born into that, born into that kind yeah. of situation, right? So it makes them question. Probably also because of the trauma that they have been through. Um, there are also those who are preparing for examinations, you know, major examinations, O levels and levels. And they feel that, okay, I have to be closer to God because then God is going to help me pass my exams. I see. Right? So when they go through, in the process of, of doing that, they start questioning, you know. So wh why am I doing this? Why am I, you know, so-called enslaving myself to examinations, right? Uh, yeah, what's the purpose of my life? Yeah, I think it can happen to anyone, yeah. young or old, right? Uh, even though in the Quran, you mentioned earlier about people reaching the age of 40, the Quran have a, a beautiful narrative about this. Right in the Quran, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentioned about those who reach forty, they stand before their Lord, they stand before Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and they ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to grant, grant them the power and ability to be grateful to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. They said, "Rabbi awzi'ni an ashkura ni'mataka lati an amta alayya." Oh Allah, grant me the power and the ability that I may be grateful for your favors, which you have bestowed upon me and upon my parents. 
and that I may do righteous good deeds such as please you and make my offspring good. Truly, I have turned to you in repentance and truly I am one of the Muslims submitting to your will. Right? Generally, people when they grow older, they start thinking about you know, how short-term life is that they have to start preparing for the hereafter. Mm-mm-mm. Right? Which brings me to my next question, was does, does having an identity crisis then, is it potentially harmful? Yep. And what are the potential consequences for someone who's going through it? In any case, the turning point turns out to be something negative. Yeah. Definitely when you are questioning yourself, uh, it can lead to either of the what ways. Allah SWT mentioned, وَهَدَيْنَهُ نَجْدَيْنَ Allah SWT mentioned that, uh, you know, in life, Allah SWT will grant you or will, will guide you to two ways. Allah will always grant the believer two ways. You can go this one way and then this the other. Mm-hmm. So one way is the good way and then the other is, of course, the one which is not, not so good. good lah. Right? So with many of the challenges in our life, um, if you do not face it with the proper guidance, with proper understanding, you know, um, it can lead to a lot of harmful things. I think f- mentally, when people who are going through such crises, mentally, the, the stress is overwhelming, definitely, right? You will be thinking a lot. You will start questioning yourself. You will even doubt yourself, mm-hmm. right? For some people, uh, this will lead them to harming themselves, yeah. you know? Nauzubillah. Uh, it could be to the extent of even, you know, affecting them so much and them falling into depression and, you know, wali azubillah, be suicidal and all that. It's a real thing. I think it's, you need to really take care of yourself, take care of your mental health. And that is why if your existential crisis is about the faith, then you need to return to the faith. Mm-mm. Returning to the faith is such a loaded term, of course. But then returning to the faith means that you have to start listening to what the Quran tells you about life, what Quran tells you about the mercy of God, what Quran tells you about living a good life and being purposeful, purposeful in life. That is very important. Yeah. Yep. And there are, of course, other types of crisis, you know, not just about faith, there's maybe about family, about career, yeah. about you know, a lot of other things. The reason I think for many people, why, why they go through such existential crisis or identity crisis is because of all this physical uh, trauma that they face, Mm-mm. right? It's through this physical pain that brings them to question a lot of the deeper meanings yeah. of life. Because sometimes without these physical triggers, there's nothing much to be bothered about, right? Yes. But, you know, when you are just, you're working, you're earning a lot, you are, you're earning your, your salary, there's nothing to worry about. But yeah. the moment you're being tested with some difficulties, you find that there's pressure, there's Tough. tension, yeah. when you are not in the best of health, you start thinking about, about why. Yeah. The question, the big why, lah. Yes. people call it the big why. Why are you here? Why are you the one? Why are you facing all these problems, right? And this could lead you to having the crisis that we are talking about today. Yes. yes. Ustaz, if for those who are going through, you mentioned, um, you know, the crisis linked to faith then, right? Mm-hmm. The Muslims who experience this identity crisis, will they feel or is it linked to a lack of faith? Mm-hmm. Or a sense of detachment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It may and may not. Sometimes the reason why um, we feel so heavy, mm-hmm. eh? let's put all these loaded terms aside, just your, that, that, the internal feeling that, that you feel, that heaviness, that sadness, that despair, we cannot deny that sometimes that is the causation is the lack of faith or the weakness of faith. But that may not always be the case. Okay. It could also be that you are really having a lot of things on your shoulders. Correct. But we cannot deny that. We cannot deny that that weakness of faith could be um, something that caused this. Yes. But then, it's not for us to judge. Mm-mm. Others especially. Yes. It's okay to judge yourself, question yourself, because that's the thing that a good Muslim should do. But then, there are also other, other causes you know, I've mentioned earlier that it could even be a, a positive thing, right? It may not be the lack of faith, but it could be the fact that you are coming into faith, Mm-mm. right? You are walking towards faith, right? People who are looking for God, those who are looking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
let's look at the life of the Sahaba, the companions. You know, there is this companion named Ham- Hanzala. Hanzala. Hanzala used to go to the to the, the gatherings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, every time he goes to the the gathering of the Prophet, he feels so happy. He feels so at peace with himself. He feels that the blessing of God is on him. Mm. You know, but the moment he returns back to his home, he feels like, oh, I'm so far away from God. Mm. Right? I feel like, oh, you know, I keep forgetting God. You know, you know, every time he experiences that, he has he start having doubt in his own faith. Mm-mm. So one day out of this probably existential crisis, she went running to the Prophet and he said, Nafakal Hanzala, Nafakal Hanzala. Hanzala has become a hypocrite. Hanzala has become a, a hypocrite. So the Prophet asked, why? Why are you saying this to yourself, O yeah. Hanzala? Oh, it's because when I'm with you, I feel that my iman is, you know, Strong. the best, mm. the strongest. But when I'm away from you, sometimes I feel that my iman, my faith is the lowest. Right? So, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said that, you know, sa'a, sa'a. Right? There are times for you to uh, increase your faith. There are times for you to also have some good time with your family and with your friends. Mm-mm. Right? This um, crisis that happened to Hanzala doesn't mean that Hanzala is a person of a weak faith. He's a companion. And Hanzala is known as someone who narrated hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu And Hanzala is someone who always narrated um, hadith that reminds uh, people of, of the hereafter. So, I mean, how can you see about yeah. this kind of person having low faith, right? Low yeah. faith or weak iman, right? Yeah. You know, coming back to my point that that you know, something questioning yourself could be it's a perception of yourself, la. And also a sign of a good faith, mm. a sign of someone who is uh, trying to 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 be a better person. Mm. Yeah. So again, your perception that you mentioned, take it as something positive in life. You know, hopefully, questioning yourself. And going through this existential crisis or identity crisis actually brings you closer, closer to Allah to subhanahu wa ta'ala. MashaAllah. Thank you so much for the insights, Ustaz. I think with that sharing, we can always remind ourselves to do what is correct, what is right, and bring ourselves closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah. Oh, hi. I was just looking for noise-cancelling headphones online. Sometimes, it just gets too noisy, you know, that I can't even hear my own thoughts. When that happens, it helps to tune everything out and tune back into yourself. Give it a try. It never hurts to reconnect. Now, Ustaz, my next question is the advice that you can offer you know, to someone who's dealing with this identity crisis. We have talked about the processes or the thoughts that someone who has gone through it or who is going through it, you know, the thoughts that they might have. So what advice can we give them? Mm-hmm. Take it as an opportunity to explore one's purpose in life. Delve deeper into one's relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think that's, that's the answer that I would give to any Muslims mm. who are facing such crisis in their life. Because we did mention earlier that many times um, such existential crises, identity crises happen because of a physical, mental, emotional pain that you're going through. And anyone who is in pain, anyone who is being tested in trial and tribulations, they always have to trust in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have to trust in the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, that He has for you. And every time we are ready to receive the mercy and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more than ready to give it to us. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, you know, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ إِن Allah said, O oh my servants who have exceeded the limits, who have transgressed, do not lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Mm-mm. For Allah certainly forgives all sins. He is indeed all forgiving and most merciful. This verse for me is so powerful because, you know, when, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called on to us, He, did, he didn't mention, O oh my servants who have committed a sin. 
or oh my servants who have done certain mistakes but Allah said qul ya ibadiy alladhina asrafu asrafu in arabic meaning that you have transgressed the limit or have um, exceeded the limit that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have have set for you as a human being and that limit could be the fact that you are overly burdening yourself with problems and 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 questions right Allah said do not lose hope in the mercy of God never lose hope so no matter what situation you are in no matter you know the pain that you are facing the pain you are feeling do not lose hope in the mercy of God always believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there for you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ready to receive you right again it needs that paradigm shift and it's very difficult for somebody who is in a difficult situation it's very easy right now because everybody is happy yes, right yes not we, facing we don't really anything or like facing but at that moment where god really tests you with something you are really facing some pain that will be the point where you really need to remind yourself do not lose hope in the mercy of allah mm-hmm. never lose hope in the mercy of god and take that opportunity you know when you are questioning when you are exploring when you are delving deeper into your spirituality take that that opportunity to build that relationship with god to come closer to god right come closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through your actions through your amal ibadat you know through your dua through your conversations with him you know, sometimes people feel that dua ni you know it's only when you uh, solat you solat you know when you have taken your wudu or you put on your telekong then you can make dua mm-hmm. or you can converse with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no i think one thing about building relationship with god is to always have that conversation with him to always you know have him in your mind and in your heart to converse to tell him your feelings you know tell him what you are going through and ask him for strength right you know in our faith in islam dua is something which is beloved to god you dua for everything everything the scholars mention that even when you you know it's like for you uh, in in the in the fake term is mustahabna you know is in the fake term is something which is like in islam even when you want to make a choice to buy a new sandal and this is in the book of the scholars you ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance right you make dua so even there is nothing which is so or too small for you to connect and to converse with god and there's there's nothing too big right sometimes the reason why people face such crises in life is because they are overburdened by the feeling of being sinful right they feel that they have done so much wrong in their life you yeah. know so how can i turn back to god and they feel that they cannot turn back to god sometimes mm-hmm. that's why allah said do not lose hope in the mercy of god right whatever that you have done you know whatever mistakes that you have committed in the past it doesn't matter when you turn back to god and that's why allah said do not lose hope in the mercy of allah so when you are facing this kind of crisis turn back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala build that relationship and there's a very beautiful hadith also narrated by imam bukhari where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said uh, اذا تقرب العبد الى الي شبرا when my servant comes closer to me or draws closer to me by a cubit eh, by a span shibron is is a, is a, is a span i had to google this because i didn't know what, what what span is in english a span is this this is a span oh. eh, this is a span when a slave of mine say allah subhanahu wa ta'ala draws near to me a span i will draw near to him zira and cubit what is a cubit a cubit i also google eh? is this a cubit Yeah so when you comes closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a span Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes closer to you in a cubit wa idha taqarraba ilayya abdi dhira'an and when the slave draws near to me a cubit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will draw near to him a fathom a fathom ni pun I had to google say so a fathom or in arabic a qalba'an is this this is how this Allah so so every little steps that you take towards God Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take more steps towards you and then the ending of this hadith is the most beautiful to me 
the Prophet Sallallahu said, "Wa ida atani yamshi atayto hirwala." And when I come, and when the, the the servant of God, when my slave comes to me walking, walking ni masuk dia macam dili dili relax relax je lah. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will comes to you hirwala. Hirwala means running, running, right? So you see that is how we believe that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala reciprocate our faith and our relationship with him every time we take a step step nearer to allah allah will take more steps to towards us. us right and that is the vastness of of mercy in our faith that every muslim should should really reflect and ponder because i think many a times the problem with us today you know why we are so troubled why we are so anxious why we are so scared is because we have lost this this understanding this uh, creed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful and that he is ready for us anytime we are ready for him yeah. right yeah i would just also like to say that the verse that you mentioned just now speaks so much to me never lose hope in the mercy of Allah because it's not just someone who's going through a tough time you know not just someone who's going through an identity or existential crisis it can be anyone who feels a little bit guilty for not spending enough time towards our faith mm. you know sometimes maybe oh i wish i could do more uh, or oh, i miss a solat a prayer just now because of something yeah. you know it speaks a lot and it reminds all of us that we should not forget the mercy of allah you know and it also brings me to my next point As I mentioned just now sometimes we feel guilty that we don't take enough steps or time to turn to our faith to do more that's also because we are very distracted by our daily lives mm. you know and some of us lead quite a hedonistic lifestyle you know it's very attractive to us because oh it's very uh, pleasurable and joyful we spend a lot of time watching netflix and actually we can be doing spending that time doing something more and returning to our faith as muslims ustaz is it wrong for us to seek the pleasures of life in this world so islam does not stop one from you know enjoying the pleasures of this world right it's just that we need to realize that Allah have decreed for us in this earth as a mere transit right so in our faith we believe that in you know, Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, provide for us this life is not eternal it's temporary and the reason for that is for you to gather all your necessary provisions on this earth mm-hmm. right that's why there is a verse in the Quran wa tazawadu fa inna khayra zadi taqwa right Do all your preparations. You know, before you travel, right? What do we do uh, before we travel? Yes, you need we to shop. Uh, mm-hmm. Every time you travel, you need to buy new luggage. Right? <laughs> you need to buy a lot of things to prepare for your travel. So the life of a believer on this, the face of the earth, is is like a traveler, right? You prepare yourself, mm-hmm. prepare yourself for an eternal life, a life after death that we believe, which is going to be eternal, mm-hmm. right? Your function on this earth is to prepare for that. So everything, every good thing that you can do, you do it as a as a means of preparing mm-hmm. for that life. So, is seeking pleasures of this worldly life okay? It's all right in Islam, right? Uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentioned, you know, when you are done with your prayer, for either qadai to salah, fantashiru fil ard. When you are done with your prayer, go out, spread out onto the face of this this earth, wa btaqoo min fadlillah, and 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 seek the pleasures and the bounties of Allah. Right, so seeking pleasure, wanting to live a happy, prosperous life, to work, to do business, to uh, acquire wealth, to get married, to have children, to have fun—all this is part of life, and Islam does not stop that. Mm-mm. But again, what we need to remember as Muslims is that our objective, whatever you have right now, we believe that these are just loans. Allah is just lending you this life. It doesn't belong to us. It doesn't belong to you, right? Even your family members, they don't belong to you. They belong to God. Mm-mm. Right? You can only protect them to a certain extent. You can only help them to a certain extent. Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala lend us or loan us our, our parents so that we may be good children to them. Loan us our children so that we can good be good parents to them, right? Again, all this 
are just means and ways for you to gather all the necessary provision for your afterlife. Mm-hmm. So, so the life of a Muslim, the life of a, of a believer, the scope or, or the, the, the perspective is very different, mm-hmm. right? We, we, we come from the perspective of the afterlife whereby we see this, this world and the pleasures of this world as okay, it's all right. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created it for you, you know. This is not um, all it is, you know. There's something else, right? And whatever you do, whatever good, whatever you work you do, try to align it with your the life in the akhirah. You know, when you go to work, when you earn wealth, don't forget to pay your zakat, mm. right? When you are with your parents, don't forget to be good children to them. When you are with your children, don't forget to be a good parent to them. When, we, when you are with your employer, be good employee to them, right? When you are in, you know, in your country, be a good countryman to your fellow, you know, uh, countrymen, mm. right? So everything that you do, the good that you do, and the pleasures that you enjoy in this life, is supposed to be directed, is supposed to be channeled to something which is much greater, and that is that life, the eternal life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised for us in Jannah. I mean. How do we ensure that balance? What steps can we take? Maybe you can give us an example that you have taken. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll think about that. But let me start off with, with a principle. Okay. The Quran is our reference in life. Yes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, in Surah An-Nahl, verse 97, he said, Man amila min wa huwa wa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, whoever does good, whether male or female, doesn't matter, and is a believer, we will surely bless them with a good life. And we will certainly reward them according to the best of their deeds. So, a purposeful life is a good life. Right? And in this verse, Allah has already provided us with the guideline. If you want to have a purposeful good life, what must you do? Do good. Mm-hmm. Do good. Allah said, Man amila salihan. Man amila salihan. Do good. And doing good in Islam, again, it is not just about the ibadah that you do. Mm-hmm. There is no question that ibadah is important. But I think as Muslims, you have to open up to the idea that ibadah is not just the things that you do on your sajada and the, the things that you do in your masjid. Okay? There is a definition mentioned by our scholars. Um, and one of the definition is al ibada kullu ma yuhibbuhu Allah wa yarfuh min amalin aw fi'lin aw qawlin so ibada according to some of our scholars they say that it's everything that you do that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be it from your action be it from your intention be it from your what which so anything that gathers the pleasures of, of Allah is ibadah. I give you an example, going out working to provide for your family, right? Is that something you think that Allah loves that? You think that Allah likes that? Yes. Then that is ibadah, Mm-mm. right? Helping out a friend, you know, going to school, helping out a friend, giving free tuitions, right? Those are ibadah. Because all those things are, are good things that garner the love of Allah, garner the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you step out of that boundary. And this boundary is actually a boundary which is made by ourselves Mm-mm. because of the lack of knowledge. We think that ibadah, when you want to do good, it must be in the masjid. To be doing ibadah, it must only be a recitation of the Quran or just salat. Yes. I have somehow, you know, yesterday I was wearing something else and today suddenly I'm in Juba or something like that, right? No, it, it doesn't have to be that to be purposeful in life. As long as you are going out, doing good, helping others, yep. right? That will lead you to having a purposeful and meaningful life. Mm-hmm. I just want to add another thing about, about having purpose. Amongst all the ibadah, 
amongst all the good things that one can do to have purpose in life. Personally, I think you asked me, you asked me about my own personal experience. I feel that helping other people is something which is really powerful in giving you that purpose and that meaning in life. Mm-hmm. And when I look back at our own uh, religious text and narrative, right, I find that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you know, when he was asked about the best of actions, you know, he mentioned about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he was asked about the best of person and the best of action. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ahabu nasi ila Allah and fa'uhum linas." The best person, the best human being in the eyes of God is someone who is beneficial to others. Mm. Right? So, uh, dalam bahasa Melayu ada istilah sampah masyarakat. Eh? <laughs> Don't be sampah masyarakat. <laughs> Don't be, uh, you know, a problem It's to the community. Yes. If you can't be a solution, don't be a problem. Yes. Right? Go out and help people. Prophet SAW said, Ahabu nas ila Allah is anfa'uhum in nas. The best of you are the one who is most beneficial to other people. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the same hadith, Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Wahabu al-amali ila Allah," and the best of action in the eyes of God, in the eyes of Allah, "Sururun tudhiluhu fi qalbi," uh, "Sururun tudhiluhu ala Muslim." Right? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "The best action in the eyes of God is the happiness that you put in the heart of your brother or sister." Mm. Right? Making someone happy. Yeah. That is the first thing that the Prophet said when he mentioned about the best of action. He didn't mention about recite the Quran. He didn't mention about go and pray. Mm-mm. But the Prophet said, "Sururun to the khiluhu ala qalbi Muslim." Happiness, joy that you inject, that you put into the heart of your your brother and your your sisters. And then he carried on to say, "Aw takshif anhu karba," or you help him to you know. Find solution for his problem, or talk to the anhu dayan, help him to pay his um, uh, debt, or taturdu anhu jawan, or you know give him food, you know relieve him of his hunger, and he said also, and this is very important. He said, "Wali an amshi ma akhi fi haja ahabu ilayya min an atakifa fi hada al masjid shahran." And then the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, "For me." to walk with my brother to help him out with his problems to find solution for his problems is more beloved to me is more dear to me than making i'tikaf mm-hmm. i'tikaf is when you sit in the masjid you make zikir right mm-hmm. then making i'tikaf in my masjid hada pointing to the masjid of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam masjid nabawi So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Go out, help your brother. That is better then, for you than you sit in the masjid and just recite Quran. Why? Because when you sit in the masjid, you pray. It's just all for yourself, for yourself. right? The goodness just comes back to you. Of course, mm-hmm. there's reward. We believe in that. There's mm-hmm. ajr, but then it just comes back to you yes. and yourself. But when you go out and help others, it's for you. It's for other people. It's for mm-hmm. the community. Yep. And the goodness just spreads and radiates across." Yeah, community. Uh, so many people, mm-hmm. right? And so I personally feel that that is one of the best way to find purpose in life. Mm-hmm. Uh, beyond, of course, uh, in Allah fi 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 alauni al abdi ma dam al abdu fi alauni akhi. Allah subhanahu wa taala will always help you. Allah subhanahu wa taala will always aid you as long as you are always helping others. And that is in the hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. And there's a very timely reminder for all of us ustaz not just to do good for us but also for others to wrap it up ustaz is there any doa that you can share for our brothers and sisters who might be going through an identity crisis or you know a midlife crisis or mm. any kind of crisis any doa that they can recite mm. to tide them over these difficult times yeah i will bring us back to the ayat that i shared earlier in mm. the first segment Of course, doa is not just about recitation, tapi uh, but also doa is about reflection. Mm. Doa is about understanding and finding meaning, right? So when you read this doa later on, uh, don't just repeat this podcast and just to memorize the doa. <laughs> Find out the deeper meaning of this uh, doa, okay. right? Because this is in the book of of Tafsir and it's pretty much accessible today. Mm-hmm. The dua that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala taught us is uh, this dua Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentioned: "Rabbi awzani an ashkura ni'matak alati an amta alayya 
wa ala walidayya wa an a'mala salihan tardah wa aslih li fi dhurriyyati inni tubtu ilayka wa inni minal muslimin which means uh, o allah grant me the power and the ability that i may be grateful for your favors which you have bestowed upon me and upon my parents and that i may do righteous good deeds such as you please and make my offspring good mm-hmm. truly i have turned to you in repentance and truly i am one of the muslimin the believers wallahu alam thank you ustaz that will be a very good um i will make sure that i will find out more about that doa instead of just rewinding back to <laughs> this point <laughs> doa doa is about reflection yes. uh, to everyone you see there's so many doa that uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us you can find it in the quran there's so many books of dua mm-hmm. right? our people especially you know my own community the malay community sometimes we buy so many dua books right dua ni dua tu dua macam mana dua uh, you know parents when they have children they go to ustaz and say ustaz do you have any dua to make my child listen to me right? <laughs> if you are, i want if, that dua also <laughs> <laughs> no, no, my answer to them is that no matter how many dua you say but if you're not changing your parenting style your child will be like that <laughs> exactly right? yes dua is about re- reflection dua is about understanding the meaning behind what you utter and finding that connection hmm. with god Yeah. So when you read this dua try to understand you know why Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to make this dua why Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us the first thing is in this, in this dua is an ashkura ni'mata kallati an'amta alayya right oh Allah help me to be grateful for the pleasures that you have bestowed yeah on me because i think gratitude you know it ties in so much with you know a lot of of the things that we are facing today mm-hmm. in our life yeah. right another hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said do not look when you are when you are facing a trouble when you're facing a problem do not look at those who are above you but look at those who are Beneath you know you. much worse off than yeah. you right because that will inculcate gratitude in yes. you yes wallahu alam thank you very much ustaz thank you so much for listening if you like this episode follow tune islam share and stay tuned for more assalamu alaikum